No way. I didn't even draw that. No, guys, this is what this thing looks like. You just saw it. You already know what it is, guys. The OpenTunes 1.5 release candidate has just released for official download on the website. Of course, it's not the official release, it's the release candidate. So they're still fixing bugs, still working really, really hard to make it the best it can be. But overall, I'm super excited to use it. But what we have in front of us is not OpenTunes 1.5. Thank goodness, right? This is OpenTunes 1.4. I thought we'd give our old friend just a little sentimental goodbye before we replace it with OpenTunes 1.5. Do remember that if you're gonna download 1.5 to uninstall OpenTunes 1.4. This won't get rid of any of your personal project settings or stuff folders. It'll just get rid of the program itself. Then you can replace that with the release candidate if you want. Personally, I'm super excited to see the transformation from OpenTunes 1.4 to 1.5. So without wasting any more time, let's get to it. Okay, check this out. So I only see slight differences. The UI is slightly different. The interface is, I can't really tell what it is. It's just like, I think the contrast was taken down a little bit. This X sheet looks a lot more clean. Let's open the same file and see how it looks. Whoa, dude, look at this X sheet. Oh, that's beautiful. They tone the contrast down, but then we still have these white lines here and it just looks really, really uniform. Very nicely done. Oh, and look at the icons, check it out. I think they caught up with the Tahoma icons. The transport tab looks really, really good. Um, I think OpenTunes is starting to come out of that phase where it looked sort of aged. Like when OpenTunes came out March 26, 2016, it looked pretty dated and they're really modernizing it, which is cool. I'm so down with this new X sheet. It looks really, really clean. Now this isn't my first time looking at OpenTunes 1.5. I actually downloaded the first release candidate on my laptop first to make sure I could, you know, download without any issues and stuff like that. But what we're actually using today is the second release candidate. So I assume there was some fixes and they released another one, which is why they have the release candidate before they, before they have their official release. So I might as well just get started with the list of things I'm excited to use in OpenTunes 1.5. So I made this list from most exciting to least exciting. So we're gonna, we're gonna go backwards on my list. So first we have UI preferences and these aren't all the changes to OpenTunes 1.5, just the ones that I think um, are most important to me and that I'm most looking forward to using. If you want the full list of stuff, go in the link in the description to the GitHub page. We have GUI cleanup, which is all new icons and they're looking absolutely snazzy. So if you guys wanna learn how you can update your OpenTunes without getting rid of all your files, my friend Darren T has a great video on that. But basically if you install the program, it's not gonna delete any of your personal stuff. That's just the basic understanding. <laughs> you don't have to worry about it deleting any of your stuff or any of your animations and stuff like that. The most are your, the, your settings, like your shortcuts and stuff like that, which will probably be overwritten if you download it. But don't worry about any projects or animations and stuff like that. We also have the brand new AOTZ My Paint Brushes brush set. So I can't wait to try these out. I actually, I actually just, just did a video on brushes. You don't have to install these. These will come with OpenTunes 1.5. So let's go to raster. I'll just make a new layer and kind of test these out. I mean, we can get this animation out of the way, right? Like we're not, you, you guys saw this intro. This not, we're not doing anything with this right now. Let's let's make a new, a new scene. Let's put it in the sandbox. Why not? Brand new, clean slate. Let's try out these brushes. Oh, so here they are. So we have the sketch brush. We'll try that first. We'll just go in order. Okay. Kind of nice. It's kind of like a basic sketch brush. No harm, no foul. But you also have the add color button, which is nice. I'm glad they added this to OpenTunes because it made it hard to justify using OpenTunes when Tahoma existed because this, you make more colors than you think. We have the ink. Okay, that's pretty nice. We have fill, I wonder what fill is. Okay, so this is just like filling in areas with color. Not bad. Paint, okay. I like this crayon brush a lot. Chalk I might use as well. Got some hatches, which is interesting. Dots, I might use this stipple as well. Oh, clouds is nice. I think we definitely needed a, a cloud brush by default in OpenTunes. We have grass, leaves. Leaves will probably be pretty useful. Fur, I don't imagine I'll ever use this, but uh, hey, it's here. Either way, that's really cool. I'm so glad they added some default my paint brushes to this program. My favorite one so far, are probably gonna be the crayon shock and stipple. I like my artwork to have that textured look and I think I'm gonna enjoy these. With that said, we should probably draw something, right? Let's do it. Now, the thing that I'm most excited to talk about, they added some new effects. I'm gonna go over a few of them with you, and I'm really excited about one in particular. And I'm just gonna start with that one, all right? We've been waiting long enough. I'm gonna head over to the animation tab, and they added, they added the Bloom IWA effect, which is 
Okay, if you play video games, you probably know what Bloom is if you've messed around with your video settings. Let me just show you what this effect does. So I'm going to add it to the thing we just drew. It's pretty rudimentary, but it should work. We go to insert effect, light, and then we have Bloom IWA at the bottom. And now when we turn on the preview button, look at that, guys. This effect looks absolutely amazing. So we have this blue circle that appears, and we, if you click and drag it, you can edit the size of the bloom. I'm gonna put it relatively small. This looks amazing. So I'm gonna finish up this drawing and then see what we can do with this awesome effect. Okay, so we have my character Pi getting all powered up here. And so I'm gonna see what this bloom effect looks like on him. Whoa, that looks, that looks amazing. Look at that. So I'm gonna turn on the size just a little bit here. We can get a little bit of bloom on him. Actually on second thought, let's delete it on Pi because he looks pretty sharp. Let's see if we do it on the Aura layer. Light, then go to bloom. Oh, what? No way, I didn't even draw that. No guys, this is what this thing looks like. You just saw it. That's what it looks like. Okay, I tried the bloom, bloom effect on just on just characters before, but I've never tried it on drawing something like an aura. That looks amazing. That looks absolutely amazing. Look at that. I did not expect it to look like that. Okay. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. Um, are we even gonna be able to get to the rest of this? I just want to play around with this thing more, and I will. But this first, that looks so cool. I barely even did. I did a terrible job drawing drawing this aura because I'm doing it for a video. Um, lots of mistakes. I could easily sharpen that up. But look at that, that looks amazing. One thing I wanna try really quick, layer blending. Let's see if we put a color dodge on it. Okay, doesn't really change it much. Maybe if I put on source two as well. Oh, nice. Okay, you got even more power. That's sick. That is absolutely sick. Um, wow, uh, where do we go from here? What if you add a glow on top of a bloom? What happens? Okay, but what if it's the source of the light? Let's see like that. Oh wow, nice, so we can get some nice blur on that. You can always edit the brightness of it, that's cool. Okay, so I guess Bloom is kind of almost like a standalone. It really doesn't need the glow with it, but this looks absolutely awesome. I mean, talk about thumbnail, right? Let's see if I can add some chromatic aberration. Distort, barrel distort, um, chromatic aberration. Let's do that. Oh, look at that, that looks sick. Look at that. That's so cool, you guys, yeah, that's so cool, right? but maybe we should add it to Pi and not the Aura. Let's see. I'm just having fun at this point. This is no longer a showcase. Okay, that, that is so cool. Okay, um, I'm gonna have to have a lot of fun with this off, off camera, but I mean, look at that. Okay, another thing that I wanna go over, which is kind of related to this super cool Pi Aura effect thing, is that they added fractal noise. So let's go to noise, fractal noise. It's another effect. So this is a standalone effect. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make it give the aura texture. Maybe it's the bloom. Maybe if I just put the aura in here, it'll work. There we go. That's what I wanted. Actually, that's perfect, because now we can put a layer blending effect on this, like, oh, like color dodge. Oh, we're making it look better. That's so cool. Yes, yeah, so you can play around with these effects as you imagine I'm going to. Yes, yeah, so there's different types of noise. You have turbulent sharp, dynamic twist. Uh, this is not a good way to show you because it's not really showing up. <laughs> we have a lot of cool things you can do. So we have different types of noise. You have, that's, that's Max, this is Rocky, kind of cool. Um, so you, I, I encourage you guys to try these out for yourself. I'm gonna go to Max. So I'm gonna select that one, put our color dodge back on it. And now we're back to looking like an absolute boss. That is so cool. I'm inspired. I'm really inspired by this. And I hope you guys are too. Okay, they also added some different UI preferences. So we have more themes. So this is the blue theme. Let's see what the dark theme looks like. And these are similar to Tahoma, which is really, really cool because I really like the ones in Tahoma. And I've already tested out some of these and they look really, really good. All right, dark looks pretty nice. I'm gonna show you guys the neutral theme. I might be using this one, but really it's just nice to look at. I'm just so used to the regular gray open tunes that this, this light gray looks cool. And of course you can switch the icon colors and then by clicking this and then you'll just, you know, have to restart open tunes. Now, finally, let's show you all the theme that no one's going to use, which is the light theme. All right, awesome. 
Now we definitely can't see anything. I'm gonna go back, I'm gonna go to the dark one. I'll leave a link in the description to Darren's video where he explains how you can update to OpenTunes 1.5 without losing your stuff. Either way, I'm gonna keep playing with this. I'm having a ton of fun. I'll probably release a video discussing more in-depth features of OpenTunes 1.5 and also a new tutorial when OpenTunes 1.5 does come out in the future. So stay tuned for that. Thank you guys for watching. If you like, leave a like. If you wanna see more of my videos on time, hit that subscribe button. I'll see you all next time. Peace.